Hello, this is Brother Cromer from the Maths Department, and this is part two of the lesson dealing with inference for one means sigma unknown. And so now what I'll be covering is confidence intervals. Okay? So confidence intervals, here was the, the first confidence interval that you saw, which is dealing with where we know the population standard deviation, or sigma. And so the formula for it is x bar plus or minus, and then you take the critical value from the z distribution, which is, the, these are the typical three that we use for the 90, 95, and 99% confidence intervals. And then we times it by the standard deviation divided by the square root of our sample size. And everything to the right of the plus or minus sign is the margin of error. But as I mentioned in the previous video, how realistic is, this, is sigma, or the population standard deviation, and how realistic is it being known? Well, it's not very realistic, so we use a confidence interval for the t distribution. And here's a, here's it's a similar looking, where we have we have x bar plus or minus a margin of error, but we get a critical value from a t distribution, and then we get our standard deviation from our sample. That's the two differences. But we'll be using software to calculate the confidence interval for a one mean sigma known. So we'll get we'll this will be factored in when we use either SPSS or Excel, and this will be as well the RS our sample standard deviation. And like the last one, our margin of error is everything to the right of the plus or minus sign. So every confidence interval you'll see throughout this course, there's a point estimate, in this case it's x bar, plus or minus a margin of error. You always find that with the confidence interval. Okay? So now here what I'd like to do is construct, using the body, body temperature data, construct and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the, of a population mean body temperature based on a random sample of 148 subjects. So here's an example. So what I'll do is let me pull up the output that I have for this. We're doing a 90 and a 95 percent confidence interval. We get this over here to the to the right here, and this is a similar table that you would see in Excel. So this is a 90 percent confidence interval, and this down here is our 95 percent confidence interval. So what do those confidence intervals mean? Well, what that means is that in this case, this first example, we are 90% confident that the true mean body temperature is between 98.13 and 98.34 degrees. We are also 90, but with the second example, when we're doing with 95% confidence, we're 95% confident that the true mean body temperature is between 98.12 and 98.35 degrees. What happens to the width of the confidence interval when the level of confidence goes up? Well, as you see here, the width slightly increases when we go to 90 to 95. That's because this critical value here um, goes up when we increase our level of confidence. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to go through a, a second example. So with the birth weight data from Australia, the birth weight of a child is an important indicator of the neonatal health. It's important that pediatric health care providers track changes in the birth weight over time. Construct and interpret a 95 and a 99% confidence interval for the birth weight. So if you'd like to, you can pull up, there's a link to the birth weight data. You saw that in part one. You can use that again and construct the confidence intervals. Okay, so for the 95% confidence interval, we're 95% confident that the true mean birth weight is between 3,115.42 and 3,436.49 grams. Now you can get that from your output here. Here's an example of output where this is a 95% confidence interval. You see the same thing in, SP in Excel like you do here in SPSS. And for the 99% confidence interval, these are the two numbers, the lower bound and the upper bound. How we interpret that, we say for the 95% confidence interval, we're 95% confident that the mean birth weight is between 3,115.42 and 3,436.49. And then if we're doing 99% confidence interval, we say we're 99% confident that the true mean birth weight is between 3,061.41 and 3,490.5 grams. Okay. Lastly, I want to talk about is checking requirements. There are two, there's a couple of requirements for doing a one mean or one sample standard deviation unknown. First of all, the sample is from a simple random sample. And that you either, uh, either the sample is from a normally distributed population, so we use a QQ plot to check that, or the sample size is larger than 30. Now also we can do some descriptive statistics to, to use for the data. For the numerical, you typically would use a sample mean and a standard deviation, and for a graphical you can use a histogram or a box plot. Now what I have here is an example of what you can see. Here's a histogram. Uh, this would be some descriptive data, as well as mean, or descriptive output, as well as a mean and a standard deviation. Also, we have a QQ plot that it would be to check to see if the data is normally distributed. It appears here that this data is normally distributed, 
and this would be a box plot to check for our um, to, to describe the data. And that concludes the uh, lesson for dealing with uh, one mean sigma unknown. If you have any questions, please speak to your instructor or talk to one of your TAs.